Willie D Live. What's up, family? Luke wants to get paid. He wants Megan Thee Stallion, Sexy Red, and Ice Spice, and anybody else out there making a living off of shaking their butt and talking about P and D to run his check. Yeah, fam, he ain't playing. Got on his live, he looked like he was taking a walk around the neighborhood or something. And he just was like, yo, man, y'all are successful because of me. Y'all need to thank me. Just come by and drop off the check and say, thank you, Luke, for allowing me to say what I want to say. Freedom of expression, you know? While the comments to me were obviously sarcastic, it did not sit well with the women's fan base. Yeah, they was going in on Luke, man, calling him everything but a child of God. The disrespect. I mean, on one hand, he does have a point. He did open the door. He did help to maintain freedom of speech and artistic expression, which is guaranteed by the First Amendment. Let me give you all some backstory for those of you who don't really understand why Luke is saying that he deserves credit for those women's careers, even though he didn't put up the money. He made a bigger sacrifice. Check it out. Two Live Crew is known for their explicit lyrics and provocative content. That's the group that Luke started back in the 80s. They released an album titled As Nasty As They Want to Be in 1989. The album became highly controversial due to its sexually explicit content. In 1990, a Florida judge ruled that the album was legally obscene making it the first album ever to be declared obscene by a court. This ruling effectively made it illegal to sell the album in certain areas, and record store owners who sold the album were arrested. The group's leader, Luther Campbell, AKA Luke Skywalker, also known as Uncle Luke, along with other members, decided to challenge the ruling arguing that their music was protected under the First Amendment, which guarantees freedom of speech. Their legal battle culminated in the case Skywalker Records, Inc. versus Navarro, where a U.S. District Court overruled the obscenity ruling in 1992. The court decided that while the album's content was explicit, it did not meet the legal definition of obscenity because it did not lack serious artistic, political, or scientific value as required by the Miller test. The Miller test is a test for determining whether material is legally obscene. The Two Live Crew did that. Luke did that. It was a landmark fight for artistic freedom particularly in the music industry. I know we benefited from it. And, you know, we, meaning the ghetto boys, we also had our own legal battles in terms of freedom of speech that other artists who came after us benefited from. Those stickers, those parental st stickers, <laughs> guess who? <laughs> yeah, fam. Nick, did we go to jail? Almost went to jail once. Almost went to jail once for being on stage cussing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, fam, what do y'all think about this? I'm willing to give uh, Luke some leeway on this. I think he was just being sarcastic, but he was being serious and reminding people that he did make early sacrifices in order for people to be able to say what they want to say. Now, I know that we should have some type of guidelines. There should be some type of test that this music, these songs have to pass in order to get to the ears of the public. You got to have something in place, right? But 
who gets to determine that? And that's where the danger lies. Like one person's uh, morality or one person's values may differ from the others. So that person, for example, the N word may not be offensive to some people who may be sitting back judging those records, judging the content of that artistry. And they get to decide, you know what, well, we cool with the N word, but the F word, we can't have that. And that's happening right now. But what say you fam? Drop a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. No more talk.